Welcome to the online worship service of Triumph Lutheran Brethren Church. Triumph is a multi-site church in the Midwest with campuses in Moorhead, Minnesota and West Fargo, North Dakota. Our vision is to see the life and message of Jesus transform hearts, homes, and cities. We're grateful that you've joined us online as the Lord works through our ministry both locally and around the world. Wherever you are at, our prayer is that God would meet you and that the life and message of Jesus would transform your life. to speak today about my story. I moved here from the NDSCS campus and I was planning on going to MSUM. So I moved to Fargo, Moorhead area in order to continue my studies. In the process, COVID hit. Before COVID, I was living alone by myself and I didn't know anybody in town and Triumph welcomed me and made me feel like I'm a part of their family. And as we had to separate, it was really hard to social distance with people I just barely got to know. But a few of them reached out and gave me their phone number and I could stay in touch with them. During COVID, I had to lose my job for a few weeks because I'm in the medical industry and I room patients and obviously you can't room patients during COVID. But um, the church was with me through all of that and they stood by me and they helped me out. And as we came back onto campus, I've been able to be in more touch with people and um, they just really make me feel like I'm at home. My nearest friends are 120 miles away and I have family across the nation. But I feel right now like I have family here in town. Thanks to, thanks to Triumph. I've been a Christian for most of my life. And Jesus draw, drew me to himself after I had been a teenager and an adult and uh, I came to worship him on a regular basis and through the years I've gone to a number of different churches but this one feels the most like home. Our scripture reading tonight comes from Hebrews chapter 4, and uh, it is talking about the, uh, the Word of God and how we can have confidence um, in that as we follow Him. So we'll read this together in Jesus' name. For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And so tonight, as we uh, worship together and be reminded of this beautiful promise in God's word, um, we're going to sing a couple songs together that point us to the cross, the finished work of Jesus, and that our identities are firmly rooted as adopted sons and daughters of the King, and all for the glory of God. Amen? Let's stand together as we sing.
failure has called me friend It constantly condescends Failure has called me friend Fear has known my name in my heart within fear has no has called my name Oh, what a sweet refrain Mercy has called my name Guilt has a heavy hand and Shame finds a way the things that I've done You're my authority Driven into my Savior, I drive in the fear out of me. The lies that condemn me are broken, the shackles are shattered by love. The word of the Father has spoken. Heaven.
So we're going to sing this familiar New Year's Eve chorus melody with some beautiful lyrics reminding us the faithfulness of God and the futility of the world. Should nothing of our effort stand, O legacy, survive unless the Lord does raise the house in vain. Its builders try to you who boast tomorrow's gain. Tell me, what is your life amidst that vanishes at dawn? All glory be to Christ. All glory be to Christ our King. All Himself our daily bread, praise Him, the Lord of love. Let living water satisfy the thirsty without price. We'll take a cup of kindness, yet yeah, all glory be to Christ. Oh, glory. All glory be to Christ, His rule and reign will ever see. All glory be to Christ, when on the day the great I am, the faithful and the true. Hello everyone. This is the second Sunday after Christmas. It also happens to be the first Sunday in the new calendar year 2021. Do you wonder what the new year will bring? Many are longing for and even praying for a 21 that will be a whole lot better than the 20. Is there a way that we can know if it'll be better? Are there any signs that indicate that it might be a better year ahead? Well, let's see. I may be able to help with that. Let's pray first. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege that we have to come into your presence. Open our hearts to your word. Help us to see Jesus, to hear from him. Take that word into our lives and let us live it every day. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text for today is from the Gospel of Matthew in the 16th chapter, just the first four verses. Here it is. The Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, when evening comes, you say, it will be fair weather, 
for the sky is red. And in the morning, today it will be stormy for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. Now, generally speaking, the Pharisees and Sadducees really didn't hang out together. They didn't want much to do with each other. They had such differing opinions on just about everything. At the very least, they disagreed about theology and end times and all kinds of other theological differences that they had. At best, they might set aside their differences if joining forces for a common cause or to to advance their respective causes. Well, they joined forces against Jesus. They wanted him to say or do things that would discredit his popularity with the crowds that were hanging around him. They set spiritual and theological traps then to kind of do him in, to lessen his popularity with the people and prove even that he was a false prophet, certainly someone not to be listened to. It seems that they felt too many of their people were following this rabbi from Galilee, this country bumpkin, if you will, their usurper of authority as they saw him, this wildly successful teacher and preacher. They hated him. They wanted him out of the way so that so they did join forces, the Pharisees and Sadducees and a few others. They compared notes and came up with some questions that would uh, back him into a corner from which he would not escape. They would make him say something that would prove him to be a fraud, not the Messiah at all. So one day they came together and presented Jesus with a little test. This version says test. Others say they tempted him with their request. Jesus, show us a sign from heaven. They wanted him to prove himself to be the Messiah, the one they were waiting for, the one who was to come and rescue Israel and lead the kingdom of David back into full glory and power. You know, Jesus, we'd be happy to believe in you. We'd be happy to accept your place as a prophet among us if you just show us a sign from heaven. Right now, just do something special. Do that and we'll even believe that you really are the Messiah, like so many are saying. It's pretty tempting stuff, don't you think? If he could win over the Pharisees, And Sadducees, that would be politically and religiously powerful. So many problems would go away. So many doors might be opened up for him and for his ministry. More funding, perhaps. So much more support, freedom of travel, not worrying about all these little tests along the way and all the bickering amongst people like the Pharisees and Sadducees, free to preach openly at any time, anywhere. This could be really good. Do you suppose his closest followers might have been listening in and hoping that he would show them a sign from heaven? You know, like like when Joshua did that thing with stopping the sun and moon in place, when Moses raised his arm over the Red Sea and the waters parted. You could do something like that, Jesus. Or Elijah calling fire down from heaven, praying to God and proving Baal wrong. Do something like that, Jesus. We'll just stand back and watch. You know, some still do this today. Go ahead, Jesus. How about about a sign from heaven for me? I'll believe in you if you just show me that you're 
real or that you, you're here or that you care and you love us. I'll believe if you'll just show me something special. I'll follow you forever if you'll just reveal yourself. Right now, Lord, give me a sign, Jesus. I'll never doubt again if you'll just do this little tiny miracle thing for me. Today would be good. If Jesus is the Messiah, then he'd be greater than all of the prophets combined. And he will be able to do far more than any of them, even more than Moses, according to the Pharisees. Just one outward sign. And that'll settle the debate for us. It was a trap. Well, the request for a sign or signs does not come from a motivation of faith, but from unbelief. The motivation behind all of this is not grace or mercy or a desire for faith to be strengthened or for lives to be changed. Jesus' life was surrounded by all kinds of signs and wonders and his opponents ignored them. The signs of Jesus had everything to do with grace and mercy, delivery of faith and forgiveness. And they just weren't interested. And what's up with that? Isn't seeing believing? Even Pharaoh was not affected by the miraculous signs, all of them that, that Moses brought before him prior to the exodus from Egypt. All those miracles, all those signs were met with a rebellious heart, even a hardened heart. And what a sad story that is. Here's another one. Voltaire said, even if a miracle should be wrought in the open marketplace before a thousand sober witnesses, I would rather mistrust my senses than admit a miracle. And so goes unbelief. The Pharisees and Sadducees were not ready to accept the signs of Jesus. They were ready only to resist him, to do away with him, to stand against him and regain control of their very self-centered kingdom. And they wanted no rivals for the people. Jesus' response? He wasn't tempted or tested in the least. Signs? You want signs? You guys evidently wouldn't know a sign if one came along and smacked you in the head. Oh, you've got that red sky at night, sailor's delight, red sky at morning, sailor's take warning thing down. You've got that down pretty good. And that's even a sign from the heavens. You're pretty good with the weather. You have sense enough to take cover when the weather, bad weather is predicted, but you don't have sense enough to pay attention to the signs that are signaling something far more critical. The kingdom of God is at hand and you don't have a clue. You are not ready for this. It's a sad statement. Jesus teaches them what they need to know. You want a sign from the skies? I've been giving you signs from the heavens of God, the Father Almighty, all kinds of signs and wonders, and not just limited to miracles. These days were marked by the ministry and message of John the Baptist and all the biblical prophets who came before him. The prophecies fulfilled in the life of Jesus of Nazareth are numerous and they are accurate. The miracles themselves should have been proof enough. Add to that is teaching. And what's not to believe? All the signs of Jesus were like that red sunset sign. They promised good and wonderful things. Salvation, life, grace, hope, healing, the freedom of forgiveness, and the peace that it brings to troubled souls. Jesus was also clear about unbelief. There is a warning side to this. If you ignore the truth of his coming, 
the power of his presence. And if you turn from God, there's a storm coming. Judgment is at hand. No peace to be found there. The only sign that will be given to these unbelievers, according to Jesus, is the sign of Noah, or Jonah, I'm sorry, Jonah. Yes, three days in the depths of death, and then a rescue, and then life. Be watching, for this Messiah will die, and on the third day will be raised to life. That sign is the greatest sign of all. Then what will you do with it? For those who believe, the sign of Jonah is a powerful word of hope. For those who do not believe, the sign is one of coming judgment. For the Son of God is triumphant. The only one worthy to judge the hearts of men. The only one who has all power and authority to do so. And he will do so. And he has made this a promise. Well, after this brief discussion uh, with these religious leaders, our text says, Jesus then left them and went away. What lonely words these are. What a terrible thing to see. Jesus left them and he went away. Let us be found believing and receive the promising sign of Jesus' presence. Receive the power of his kingdom and, and the grace that flows from the throne of God for us. I suggested at the beginning of this little message that I might have some signs for you that might help make 2021 a little bit better than 2020. I want you to bear with me as we take a look at that most common of signs in our day, the traffic light. Three signs in one. Let's get a little guidance from them for the year ahead. I'm gonna start with the yellow light, the one in the middle. It means caution, slow down. Be aware of your surroundings and get ready to stop. A yellow light does not means speed up. A lot of people don't know that out there, but it's, it's a sign to slow down, be very cautious and aware of what's going on around you. It's very important for all of us to be careful out there, isn't it? Be watchful, guard your hearts, guard your lives. Watch over the lives of your children and your friends and your neighbors. If you slow down a bit, you might see some needs that you'd otherwise miss. Take time in God's word and handle it carefully. Teach it clearly and obey it certainly. Well, then we go from the yellow to the red light. Stop. It's not a suggestion to slow down and then just blow through the light or a stop sign, very common these days but it does mean to stop and wait and look and listen. Stopping once in a while is a very good thing for all of us. Stop to pray, stop to worship, to consider your life and your place in God's hands. Even Jesus stopped for prayer, for retreat, and for communion with his Father. We should never neglect a stop sign. It's there for a reason. And it's very important. We should be careful to stop every day. Take time to be with our Heavenly Father. To pray, to study, to learn more of Him, to receive what He has for us. Well, then the red light does turn to green. And green, as you well know, means go. God never asks us to stop and stay stopped. That's actually dangerous too, isn't it? If we pull up to a red light and it turns green and we don't go, that's not safe. We are to move on to go forward and be about what God has for us. 
to do. If you go into his word and move through it thoughtfully, prayerfully, the going is, well, it will be good. So a few signs for our times. Red light, green light with a little yellow light. Do your own study of how they work in your life. Could be signs for a better year ahead. Does it seem a little silly or simple? Well, work with them a little bit. And I want you to get back to me in about a year and see if it was better. Let me know if this helped at all. Well, I'm sensing a red light right now. I need to stop. But let's stop and pray. Gracious Father, we seek no sign but that of Jesus. The sign of the empty cross, the sign of the empty tomb, the sign of a living Savior given us by your Holy Spirit. Open the eyes of our hearts to your word, to your love and guidance. Fill all our days, all the days of our lives, Lord, with hope and peace as you give us days. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are so glad you joined us online today. We hope you encountered the grace and the truth of Jesus Christ during our time together. If you've been blessed by our mission and ministry here online, we'd love for you to partner with us in some practical ways that make this online mission possible. You can share this service with your friends and family, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or support our mission financially if that's what you're feeling led to do. Giving online is really simple. Visit us at triumphlbc.org giving. We appreciate your generosity as we continue to see God at work through our ministry without borders. Now, not only in our local communities, but across our world and nation. So before you go, receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve your Lord.